It's that time of the year when your plants start waking up, it starts getting warmer and the seasons are officially changing. Your plants are waking up and they are putting on this beautiful lush green growth. But what does that growth mean? That's what I want to show you today with this raspberry tree so that you know how to identify different types of growth on your raspberries so that you can maintain a steady supply of raspberries throughout the years to come. If this is your first time here, my name is Craig and I'm on a mission to live a more sustainable urban life. And through that journey, I am sharing all my tips, tricks, learning experiences with you so that you don't have to listen to mainstream media, you can get some practical real world examples. If you're coming back and returning to watch my videos, thank you, thank you, thank you for your unwavering support. You're all amazing and you're all deeply, deeply appreciated. So when it comes to raspberries, I've done a few videos. I'm going to tag them for you, put them in the links below. We have gone in detail into understanding different types of canes, primo canes, floric canes. We have also done a video on separating out new growths on runners on your plants that you can get a whole bunch of free raspberry plants from a mother plant. And now what I want to show you is identifying new growth on your raspberry as well as how to prune your raspberry so that you don't wipe out entire harvests for this year and you set up future years for the best possible harvests you can get. If we have a look at this little branch in front of us you'll see that it is an existing branch so this if you have watched my previous videos is a floricane it is a second year cane. And as I've explained in the previous videos, this floricane will now start fruiting. And how we identify a floricane once the growth has come out is you will see it has no longer got a growing tip. It's not growing vertically anymore. All of the shoots are starting to come off of the side of the plant. And it is these side shoots that are gonna give us all of our raspberries. They are gonna be little clusters of flowers at the tips of the horizontal branches. And on those tips, juicy, delicious, tangy, sweet raspberries. Now compare this type of growth with this type of growth. This is a completely new shoot. You can see the leaves are really big and it is a green stem that is coming out of the ground this is not going to bear fruit for us this year because I know this variety fruits on second year canes not on first year canes this green new shoot that has come out out of the ground is going to grow vertically the entire season and it's going to become nice and thick so it's going to grow have lots of leaves and then it's going to become nice and thick to support the next year's growth this new shoot next year is going to do what this little one is doing. You can see this was last year's growth and now we are having a whole bunch of new side growth coming out, which is gonna give us the raspberries. So you will see in your raspberry that you're gonna get two types of growth every year. You're going to get lush new green growth on green stems and that is your primo cane. You're then going to get new growth that is sprouting horizontally from existing canes and these are your fruiting or flurry canes. As long as you know those two types of growth you'll be able to identify the two types of canes and make sure you always get the right ratio of new canes to old canes to make sure you get a steady supply of raspberries in the years to come. Now when it comes to pruning your raspberry it can be quite daunting for a lot of people, just as any form of pruning can be. Pruning is one of those that can give you sweaty palms, but luckily, if you just follow these 
guiding principles of identifying the two types of growth, you'll be perfectly fine. Now, what you want to do is, if you look, watch my previous video of the separation of the, the runners to create new plants, you don't want to have this plant completely bush out with new growth. You want to be thinning them out so that you only got a few new canes that are coming out. Those you can then let go into your flurry cans. So what we want to do is we want to go three to max five existing flurry gains. Now, this one over here that I showed you initially is a really nice little one. It's on the edge. That's perfect. We are going to keep this one. This big one in the front here is actually not doing anything. And a nice little tip to see whether the flurry cane survived the winter is to take it, snap it, that one's dead. So this one we can take out. And you want to take it out just at the soil level. You don't want to go down. And you also don't want to go too high that it rots down. And this is dead wood. So it's a lot firmer. And having this one out already just opens up this tree so much. So now that we got that one out, we can actually start looking around and identifying some more of the dead branches. Here's a nice tall one in the middle, but that one is also dead. So removing that. So my method of working is to first look for the dead canes because there's no point choosing canes first and not knowing which ones are dead or alive. Okay, so now I have cleared out the dead canes. And now what I have left with is one, two, this is a really small one. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine canes. Now what I want to do, and this is just how I work. You can work in a different way. You can follow someone else's method. That is perfectly fine. I like to look for the thicker stems first. So if we look at this one at the back here, which I will show bring in close to see, it is very small, but it's also very thin. If we look at this one next to it, it's also small, but it has at least got thickness on the branch and a whole bunch of green growth. So this small little one I'm taking out, the one right next to it is just as small. It's coming out. And then at the back here, there's quite a flimsy one, but the wood on it doesn't look great. So that one is going to come out. Then we're going to look at this little flimsy one front, which is also small, thin. This one over here, you can see is a tiny, tiny little branch. That one I'm going to get rid of. And now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Still going to get rid of two more. Now these two over here, I am going to keep one of them. So this one that isn't as vigorous, I'm going to snip off. Ow. These thorns sometimes really do bite. <laughs> so we need to get rid of one more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the center of the plot. So I have one on the outside, these two on the outside, and then these two are on the inside. But there's another one over here on the inside. And it is not as vigorous as the outside one, so I'm taking that one off. And it's got tangled, so it's biting. So now we have one, two, three, four, five canes. It might seem like you are cutting away a lot of berries, but believe you me, this plant is going to be way more productive now. And we're also allowing more space for the shoots to come out. If you are growing in the ground, different story because you have more space for the plant to spread out. So you would then look at this plant spreading out to pretty much right next to you over here. You would have another one next to it, another one. So you would have five, 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 five. So you can see how you then in a row of raspberries have a few clusters next to each other that are all producing really well on five canes each. Now we have a whole bunch of space for the new growth to come out and I can see one, two, three, four, at least four new shoots that are coming out of the ground. 
And what you will find when you grow your own raspberries is that throughout the growing season, they will continue to pop out. So if you only have four now in spring when the plant's coming alive, that's perfect. It's showing a healthy plant. If the new shoots come out at some point in summer and they just take over, keep snipping them. If you have a nice one like this, snip it off and make raspberry leaf tea. It is delicious and it's super good for you. So now you know how to identify the two types of growth in springtime that you will find on your raspberry and you know how to thin it out and prune it to get ready for big harvests and future production. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful and until next time please share this out to your friends and please leave me any comments if you've got any questions about anything I've said, anything I've done or just generally have any questions. As always, I will get back to you and until next time, happy homesteading.